Hey guys, welcome back to Raymore Repair. Today we're going to do a simple job. We're going to change out this rear tire. It's got a crack. It goes pretty much all the way around it. And it has simply just died from boredom. This is the old KD-175 that was sitting in a basement for years and years. And it was not kind to it. So let's get going. Remove our axle nut. Then we gotta go to the other side. We're gonna take our brake stay arm loose. This is the bead lock. We're gonna back it off to almost the end. There we go in the drop. This one part goes, the rest will usually follow. It's a bit old and crusty. Now to get this bead to come up, you got to get the rest of the tire down into the drop center. There we go. Here's our valve stem. We'll push it in. Work my fingers underneath it. Work the valve stem up over the edge of the rim. Stuck to the tire pretty good. Of course, they've been best buddies for 30 years. Maybe, maybe more. Get our spacer over there out of the way. There we go. One tube out. It's not going to go back in. We got a new tube. Here went my bar. There we go. The bead lock, the tire beads have to go underneath this and then they come down and clamp the tire to it. That's why they call it a bead lock. It locks the bead to the wheel. There really isn't a balance dot on this thing considering it's a uh, knobby off-road tire. So we're not too worried about that. And then we'll take and just work our bead on and work our way around. Should go on pretty easy. There we go. This is a new IRC tube. It is a 41018, which is what our tire is. So it's all right there. And we're getting ready to put the valve stem through the valve stem hole, which is right here in the wheel. So not sure how well I can film this, but I want to give it a shot. I'm probably gonna have my hands and everything else in the way in my head. Here we go. You just have to trust me on this, I guess. And there it is in the hole. And we're gonna start that on, but we're just gonna barely start it on. That's all we need. Now I'll stick the rest of our tube in here. Now there's a lot of talk about maybe putting baby powder on the tube to make it slide in easier. You know, I've just never done that. I've been changing these tires for 35 years. I've done them on the trail, in the garage, at dealerships. I worked as a service manager and technician for 30 years at a dealership, and I just never have done it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm simply stating I've never done it. We're gonna reach in here and make sure our tube is not under the beadlock, and it's not. 
So we're gonna roll this back around here. And we're gonna push our beadlock back. And then we're gonna get our tire to set down between the beadlock and the wheel. Now you wanna make sure when you're using these tire irons, you do not have the tube between the wheel and the tire iron. You'll pinch a tube and then you get the privilege of starting all over. We're gonna set this down just like this, just like I'm doing. We're gonna work our way around, making sure we don't have any tube between our bar and that. And then we're simply gonna work this one over here. We're gonna work this one back about another three or four inches. Like that. And we can see our tire is dropping between the bead block and the wheel. At this point, we're gonna sell a bead buddy over here. This is the Bead Buddy 2 by Motion Pro, not a sponsor. and hook it under my belly to hold it in place. Take a little less bite, maybe. Roll that one over. I think we're through the worst of this now. That one more time and we'll be done. I'm pushing on the back of this bar to bring it up off the wheel a little bit and shoving it in there at the same time. I did that so it wouldn't scratch the wheel as bad and also makes it slide in easier. I don't have a lot of air in the air compressor. I think it's only got about 40, 50 pounds in it. We're gonna take the valve core out of the tube. This is important. We wanna make sure this thing completely deflates so all the air comes back out of the tube. That lets that tube that may be twisted up in here relax and kind of set where it needs to be. We don't want the tube so it's pinched over on itself anywhere. It'll rub a hole in itself. Because we're only gonna run about 15 pounds of air in this. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it one more time. We're going to put air in it and let it back out. Let it all out. Then we'll put our valve core in. We've got about 20 pounds in it. We're going to let that back down to about 15. Tighten up our bead lock. We're going to set our brake in. like that. Put our chain on. Spacer will sit in here. That's goes through the spacer, through the brake backing plate, through the wheel. There we go. All right, while we're here, let's go ahead and put our brake stay arm bolt back on. Flat washer, lock washer, castle nut. You get the drill. Let's see if this takes care of this. There we go. There is not a washer on this nut. We're gonna go one more plate there. I think this one will probably do it. Well, yes, yes it will. Bend that back like that. Yep, there's a hundred ways of doing those too. That's how I do them. That's how I've always done them. I haven't had a single one ever fall back out in over 30 years. Here's some PB blaster for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's what bolts crave. Let's stop about there and see what we got. We have one incredibly bent up rear brake pedal too, so. That's pretty good, I like it. All right guys, thanks for watching. God bless.